Hello and welcome to Issues and Insights, the show that keeps you up to date on all the great things happening here in Hardin County. I'm your host, Kendra Scott, and we appreciate you tuning in today. Well, if you take a look around, you'll see that there are a lot of new things happening in our community. New buildings, new roads, new restaurants and businesses, all great things for our community. Another new face is a part of our Hardin County leadership. We have a new leader at the helm and Keith Tall as the Hardin County Judge Executive. So we're excited that he was able to take some time today to sit down with us and talk a little bit about the position and his hopes and dreams and uh, for the future of Hardin County. So welcome Judge Executive Keith Tall. Well, it's great to be here. You getting uh, used to that title and that name? I'm, I'm trying to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I think I was at one uh, event and I think it was uh, uh, Mayor Duvall. He was mm -hmm. speaking at uh, and doing something, and he I was in the room, and he I guess I he must have said, Judge, Judge. He must have said mm -hmm. this several times. I never turned around. Oh. <laughs> it's like. He says, I guess you're not used to that. And I said, I don't know if I'll ever get used to that right. or not. But it's, uh, it, is, it is new for me, though. It is yeah. new. Well, it's a, it's a wonderful title. And yeah. thank you for taking on that leadership role. Because we know it's, um, it's never easy stepping into public office. And it wasn't no. like you'd done this all your life. So no, um, tell us a little bit about your motivation. Why did you decide to run for judge executive? Well, it's, <laughs> it's a good question. And uh, I'll just try to summarize because it's, um, it's a, a bit of a longer story. Um, but I, I, you know, like you were saying, I, I had not been in politics or had ever really thought too much about doing that type of a job before. Um, so it was a, it, it kind of kind of snuck up on me a little mm -hmm. bit. Okay, <laughs> um, we we had been maybe probably about three years ago. We started getting approached and started hearing some rumors about some uh, solar power, uh, industrial solar. Uh, interest into the into the area and over uh, a couple of years started doing some research and finding out some things about that that uh, we weren't overly excited about and along with some other neighbors and um, and people in the Cecilia area where I live and um, so we started gathering together looking at it studying it trying to understand it and then uh, finding out that there were um, thousands of acres that were being leased out uh, to these companies that were coming in, uh, interested in, um, you know, basically installing uh, thousands, really a million solar panels uh, in our in our county. So uh, we started to want want to kind of push back on that a little bit and at least say let's let's hold up on this and study it and understand it and what it actually means to our county and kind of ran up against some um, I don't know some roadblocks there just it just wasn't uh, a lot of ears that were listening and uh, through that decided you know I, we can complain about it I can complain about it and uh, you know, probably uh, December of, um, not last year, but the previous mm -hmm. year, um, decided to, uh, some, someone approached me and says, why don't you run for judge executive? I mean, you're, uh, and I, I, my wife and I started looking at my background and started mm -hmm. looking at what the job entailed best mm -hmm. that we could and talking to some other people that knew about it and decided, you know, this is something that I could do. And uh, so through that, we just wanted to make a few changes just to be a little more of a listening ear to, to mm -hmm. our citizens to, that have issues and want to come forward and, and talk about them. And uh, just wanted to make a, you know, maybe some improvements and I thought the best way to do it was to actually step into the role and, and start to make those changes. So, uh, so that's, that's the summary, I guess, yeah. of how, how it happened. Well, that's neat because we know a lot of folks sometimes kind of start out um, in politics, you know, young, I would mm -hmm. say in their 20s or so and say, well, I want to serve on a council, then on this and work my way kind of up. Right. Um, so you're, you're a brave man to jump into the fray. <laughs> Brave and go, yes. And it go. might be a word, but there may be other words to address that. Uh, but but uh, it's true because but, yeah. not a lot of folks um, want or, or feel the desire, the calling to, to be a public servant. Yeah. So thank you for that because it's a huge leadership role. And of course, at well, this thanks. time, a cusp of change in it our is. community. So you're, you're taking the helm at just the right time yeah. as we are busting at the seams. So tell us a little bit about what the first couple months have been like because I'm sure you had to just hit the ground running once uh, 
you it, were sworn in. It was. It's, it has been, I guess the best uh, word that I've been using is intense. Okay, that's it, a good it, word. <laughs> it is a good word and uh, it's, um, there's nothing negative about it. It's just a lot. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I, I tried to do my best uh, in preparation for it through mm -hmm. last year through campaigning and then sure. Uh, you know, all the way from the uh, general election all, mm -hmm. all the way up to actually taking office to learn as much as I possibly could to mm -hmm. uh, meet as many people, uh, try to get a feel for any other issues, any other things that we wanted to, to learn. But yeah, the first two months have been, um, you know, there's, there's deadlines mm -hmm. <laughs> that, uh, you know, there's these uh, fis fiscal court meetings that, mm -hmm. that need to happen, right. okay? And mm -hmm. so whether I'm ready or not, it's, you know, that, that, day, that day is there, it's looming out there, we need to get ready for it. And so I was able to find a, a, a few people to help me and, uh, you know, of course, um, my uh, staff, mm -hmm. we, we needed to bring some new people in there. So we were trying to, uh, you know, I was trying to find some, some people to do that. We, we posted for, uh, for all of those and uh, so we was going through interviewing processes and, and um, I had to, um, one uh, lady that um, uh, I knew that was kind of in kind of in between jobs and mm -hmm. she was she agreed to come in for a, a, a time up through January mm -hmm. to uh, kind of be the uh, admin executive administrator okay. mm -hmm. type person and uh, so she was brave and <laughs> she came in there uh, in middle of December Judge Barry was nice enough to uh, in the in fiscal court to hire her on for the last mm -hmm. two weeks of December so she oh, cross trained awesome. okay. and learned as much as she could and then we also of course had others that uh, department heads like mm -hmm. the treasurer Le Lisa Pierman and mm -hmm. um, and uh, our, our county attorney mm -hmm. uh, Jenny Oldham yes. that um, had been there been there for quite a long time and they mm -hmm. they knew a lot about how things should work mm -hmm. a lot of the resolutions come through them that need to be voted on so they were all very very helpful, um, knew a lot, and so, I mean, I'm not saying we didn't kind of struggle to get through that first mm -hmm. physical court, but it actually went quite smoothly. Good. Uh, so you didn't know all the struggles. <laughs> behind you know, the scenes. Behind the scenes <laughs> to get ready for it, but uh, it was good to get through that, and, and then another one uh, at the end of the month. And we did make some, some changes, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to the timing. Yeah, that was one of the things that you you were, um, ran on in your campaign. I, I did. Was I making to, the time I, more accessible and convenient for folks. I, I did, and and so you know we were able to. We decided, uh, at least initially, to uh, move one of the mm -hmm. uh, of the two in in the month to a later time in the day to five thirty versus three thirty. Mm -hmm. So uh, our second one was at that later time frame, and uh, you know it, a lot of a lot of people like myself before jumping into this don't really know um, you know that you've got these uh, department heads that are mm -hmm. over various different services that that Hardin County provides for um, you know for its citizens mm -hmm. so um, you know so that means that they need to stay after hours mm -hmm. for for that meeting and so it's it's um, it's not overly convenient for for that, but uh, I, I believe that uh, that and also the committee meetings, all mm -hmm. the four different committees, we moved all those from morning or afternoon mm -hmm. to 5.30 also. Okay. So that's, um, you know, at least five evenings mm -hmm. uh, a month that, um, you know, that you're asking your people to, to stay over and, you know, be, be a part of that and be able to answer questions and mm -hmm. uh, give reports. Um, and you know they were all receptive, you know, and mm -hmm. uh, it was a change sure. uh, for that. But it's, you know, again, it's it's trying to make our local gov government even more accessible mm -hmm. and more uh, participative, you know, to for people to come in. And um, mm -hmm. that is a word, right? Yeah, I think so. Uh, yes. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to to be a part of it. So, um, have you had great response from from the community? Have you seen more citizens attending? We, the we meeting have. And feedback? Uh, yeah, I, it's been it's all been positive. Um, you know, we've had good attendance uh, at at fiscal court meetings, mm -hmm. um, and even at the three thirty one in, in the afternoon that we left at the same time. Um, lot, lots of people have been coming and uh, being supportive. Um, some questions have come up mm -hmm. and. Uh, uh, and, and then the committees uh, have had some really good uh, per 
you know, participation too. So mm -hmm. I've been I've been encouraged by it. That's good. Yeah. Well, and it's exciting because um, you know lots of new faces in county yes. government. So talk a little bit about that new fiscal court. Yes. And so you're all kind of learning together. It's a learning curve, but we yeah. have a new clerk, new new magistrate. So tell right. us a little bit about how that's going. Yeah, that's that's been um, it's been a um, it really hasn't been diff all that difficult because the. Uh, the new magistrates that, mm -hmm. that uh, have come on, and then of course uh, Brian Smith, our new clerk, uh, all have been jumped in with both feet, uh, kind of like all of us really, right. <laughs> together. And we've, we've all been going through, uh, especially the magistrates, uh, together with them, uh, some training that's been available, uh, some things that you know, I, I wasn't aware of some associations, some, uh, some organizations that are out there to help Good. do that. Yes. Uh, we've, um, uh, Jenny Oldham, our, our county attorney, and some others, uh, Lisa Pierman, the treasurer, and others uh, have been helpful in, in trying to help train mm -hmm. uh, locally. Um, a magistrate Fred Clem, who's mm -hmm. been on for, for quite a few terms, and he's been, um, you know, been there as, to help you know, help his mm -hmm. fellow magistrates understand a few things about right. about how and to proceed. Torn. So that's been good. Mm -hmm. And then you've also got this organization, um, CACO, mm -hmm. which um, is the Kentucky Association of Counties. Mm -hmm. Didn't know it existed, okay, <laughs> and, and now I do, and I'm glad I do. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and then a kind of a sub a sub uh, group or organization is the the Kentucky. Now I have to work through this Kentucky. Uh, County Judge Executive Association. Yes. Okay, and um, that that group, of course, is just made up of all the judge executives mm -hmm. of the state of Kentucky or the Commonwealth of Kentucky. So, it's you know that that has been very helpful. Both mm -hmm. of those organizations have put on uh, multiple uh, training mm -hmm. sessions, and uh, then you also get to network with others. Mm -hmm. You know, some some judge executives in other counties that have been around for a while, and so started that process. And um, so that that's all been very helpful mm -hmm. for me and for the magistrates have have got their own uh, association oh, good. that uh, helps them and has put on several uh, training mm -hmm. uh, trainings and so uh, you 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 put all that together and it 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 seems overwhelming at first but then as as you start to jump into some of the training and and kind of mm -hmm. lean on some of the people that have been around for a while. Mm -hmm. Um, that softens it, you That's know, good. and uh, so it's it, it really it has been intense, mm -hmm. but it it's been manageable, and uh, I've been really excited about it actually. That's good. That's good. Well, you're still there, so that's the good news. Hey, <laughs> still vertical. You didn't be like, you know? like I'm out. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm I'm committed. <laughs> that's and, right. Uh, citizens put me in here, and I'm I'm going to serve these these four years and do the very best that I can. Well, we appreciate that. So, has anything surprised you so far in your role? You know. I've thought about this some, and um, I, I feel like I did, you know, quite a bit of upfront stuff before mm -hmm. I was stepping in there. So there, you know, you, you don't know what you don't know. Right. So I mean, obviously there's some things that crop up that uh, I didn't, you know, I wasn't ready for. I didn't know what they were, but I, I think the biggest thing to really answer that question has been just a, uh, I guess you would say, kind of a, all the encouragement. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I. I knew there was a lot of people in the county that that were pulling for me, mm -hmm. you know, uh, but I didn't really realize how much, you know. So many people have come to me, and and some of my um, some people that I've known for a while, some that I yeah. haven't, and said, "Look, as we've driven by the government building, and we see it, we pray for you," oh, that's you know, great. and yeah. stuff like that. You know, that, that just kind of, you know, touches me, and, mm -hmm. and knowing that they're doing that, and um, you know, I need prayer. Not and sure I need I need wisdom, mm -hmm. and um, so it's it's been, you know that that type of of, of I don't know just embracing um, uh, for me to be in there and, and that encouragement has just meant a lot and it was a bit of a surprise that it was that much. I bet. Well, that's I think a testament to the people in our community it is. and how we do step up and support one another and only want the best. Um, for our leadership, for our county as we move forward. So um, that's wonderful that people share that. Yeah, and, yeah. And, that they mean it. and, all, and also the, the internal, uh, mm -hmm. the, uh, I wouldn't call it maybe a big surprise, but that um, the department heads and all the employees mm -hmm. of, of Hardin County government 
have been uh, very supportive, uh, more so than I thought, mm -hmm. and uh, have been very open to maybe what they might think right now are a little few kind of crazy ideas uh, <laughs> of things that, um, you know, that as I look, look out and some things I'd like to see change mm -hmm. and, and uh, improved on. So, you know, they've been very supportive. And uh, so it, it's, it really has been um, a good couple of months, good. even though it's been very busy. Very, very busy, yeah. very intense. And one of those things that you have done is that you've had to um, hire some folks, as you mentioned. Mm -hmm. And so we have a new emergency uh, services manager in Joey Scott. Yes. And a lot of us in the community have known Joey um, and his, his family and all yeah. that they do. So talk a little bit about Joey and his new role. Yeah, I was, um, it was one of, one of those things in January that was uh, some additional uh, pressure, really, because we didn't have an uh, emergency manager, um, emergency service manager um, in place. So um, per some laws and some r rules, we, sh we were supposed to get one started by the end of January uh -oh. was the target okay. time. And mm -hmm. it's like, man, that's not a whole lot of time to go out and, yeah. and uh, get uh, find the right person. Mm -hmm. um, so it, you know, it takes time. I wanted to post it to find out who in Hardin County or even some maybe out of Hardin County that would be interested in this job. So that took some time to get that and to get, you know, and we, we got a great response. We, we had, uh, I don't know, it was probably pushing 10 applicants. Good. And uh, we, <clears throat> we in, ended up uh, interviewing, I think, seven of them. Mm -hmm. And I'm used to a team type of interviewing process. I, I love that type of process where you mm -hmm. get you know, uh, people that know this position better than me because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm new. So, you know, talking about the uh, uh, emergency uh, medical service, EMS director mm -hmm. and 911 director, mm -hmm. you know, some of these people that have been in this type of um, environment mm -hmm. for years and years. And um, we, we do have a deputy emergency serv service um, uh, director that uh, doesn't live in the county, so he wasn't eligible to oh, be okay. that in that position. But, uh, you know, I wanted him to be a part of it, too, even though he'd be reporting to this person. Mm -hmm. So just developing that team approach and bringing people in and, let, and letting everybody ask questions. And at the end of the day, a team, um, you know, uh, decision. And it was difficult because there were some really good candidates. And uh, But Joey rose to the top. He's He's been... In, um, involved in, in these types of services and serving the county f since he was, uh, I think he said he remembers being on a fire truck when he was five years old. Right. You know, his dad was <laughs> mm -hmm. big time into it too. And just a serving, servant attitude, mm -hmm. uh, big heart for Hardin County. Yes. Uh, wants to do what's right uh, mm -hmm. and, and, and uh, develop the ser these emergency services um, more than they are right now to make mm -hmm. sure that we, we all, when we have an emergency, an accident or, or medical emergency, that we get the response that we, mm -hmm. we need or a fire, you know, um, that that happens in uh, the, the right amount of time and the right amount of response, the right people are responding, all those things. Mm -hmm. Yes, because as our community grows and, and new things are added and that sort of thing, there will be a need for more emergency services, I'm that's sure. Right. So yes. um, I'm sure that's part of the plan. And that's one of the things that you also campaigned about I did. Um, was our emergency services. So talk a little bit about that, what your, what your goals yeah, are. Yeah, yeah. It, um, you know, I was concerned about it, uh, just the input that I was getting from a lot of people in the community and people that had, that had or were working in that area. And so as I stepped into the office, it was one of my first things, priority that I wanted to really dig into that a little bit, understand it some more, and confirm, or maybe maybe some of it wasn't true. You know, I, I just didn't know for sure until I actually got into office. So I have confirmed that we, we are stretched. You know, that we've got some, some wonderful um, servant-hearted people out there that are working in our ambulance service. Mm -hmm. and. And also in our fire service, we've got volunteer fire departments all through the county, about right. 12 of those that, um, that people just give of themselves. They get up in the middle of the night, it's, they don't get paid for it, and they, they show up at your house and, and, and do what they can to, uh, mm -hmm. to take care of that, uh, of that very hard, uh, difficult situation that you may be in. So I, I see, especially in the ambulance service, um, that they are working probably more hours than they need to. They're supposed to get a certain amount of rest. Mm -hmm. 
And um, so we, we're having to address that. And I don't know all the answers to that. I'm not an expert in it, but I am leaning on a lot of others that are experts. Mm -hmm. And uh, Joey will be, uh, I'm asking him to start, um, and we'll be working together on uh, putting together an advisory board uh, that will be starting up um, fairly soon. I, I mean, he's been in this position for a couple of weeks, so why not just throw that at right. him too, you know? <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, give, give him a little bit of time before we really get started with that. But I've already talked to several uh, people in our county and our community that, um, you know, have decades and decades of experience. Mm -hmm and uh, we need to pull a group of people together and let them work through an initial assessment of where we are right now. This mm -hmm. is what I'm used to as far as trying to solve problems as I need to understand the current state, the current mm -hmm. situation. You know, what are our, our times that, how long does it take for ambulance to get to a certain place mm -hmm. from uh, different parts of the county and trying to pull that kind of data together and make it very clear where are we right now. Is it good enough? I don't think it is, but we'll find out for sure with some data. Mm -hmm. And then we'll s determine with this group to help us to understand where do we need to go four or five years down the road, understanding that we're going to have some influx of some people yes. and in industry and how we're going to handle all that. Okay, so let, let the experts work it through, come up with some plans, some options mm -hmm. with some costs associated with them. You know, this, this, cost, this, this particular plan that you come up with may be $30 million, you know, mm -hmm. so can we do that? I don't know, maybe we can't. So what's, what's option number two, right. you know, and maybe it's five million, maybe we can do that. Mm -hmm. So those types of things that we're gonna have to work through, and mm -hmm. my goal for the, for the year is really have that assessment, have the board in place, have the assessment done, and have at least a pretty good shot at where, you know, maybe what are some of these options and what are some things that we need to do initially to uh, move us in that direction for the future. Awesome. So that all, all the citizens of Hardin County are getting the services that they, they need, that they expect, they right. deserve. I love it. And I love you've segued yourself. Thank you very, very much. <laughs> Talking about your goals and plans uh, for the year and for Hardin County, because we know obviously it's a four year term and you're not gonna accomplish everything in for, in for four years in the first year. So right. you have to break it down, you know, eat the elephant one piece at a time. So right. um, tell me a little bit about what are your plans and goals just for this first year? Yeah, it's uh, really just trying to understand, I mean, this first three months to six months uh, is really a kind of an assessment time for me. You know, I don't want to make too many changes or or look at some possible changes in, in implementing too much. So, um, you know, but I am starting to talk to some of some of the uh, department heads about some some ideas and some things that uh, I would like to um, really help train them, if you will, and under, for them to understand, you know, what where, where do they see their department going? You know, start to incorporate more of a thought pattern of goals and objectives. Um, what do we need to measure to understand where we are right now? If I, if I have a goal, I need to understand, you know, how, if I get there, how do I know I got there? Right. <laughs> you know, so <laughs> so a, a few basic things that, you know, that we need to put in place to really start to establish that kind of thought process. And it's not to say that there haven't been, you know, personal goals and objectives or department in the past. I don't know all the history. But uh, right now, I think it's a, it'd be a, big, a pretty big step to establish that, document it. That's the things, things I'm used to in, in, uh, you know, in my past life. Um, so I think there's a lot of benefit to it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we'll, we'll be working through that. Um, but I, I think just teamwork, you know, working on that. We've kind of adopted uh, uh, Team Harden, oh, you I know, yeah. as, as our kind of our theme. And, um, and I'll just give you one. Do I have time for a, a quick example? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, just uh, in the first, really just probably the first three weeks, um, there's, a, uh, there's a road in Hardin County. It's mm -hmm. Amish Road. Mm -hmm. And um, it has been a, a problem for, I, I think, pretty long time. Mm -hmm. And it was probably blacktopped, you know, and, and surfaced, I don't know how many years ago. And it probably should have never been. And uh, because there's some sawmills out there mm -hmm. and some heavy equipment, and so that that road uh, was a bit of a mess. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, so what I wanted, you know, so we decided to, to pull together the road um, supervisor Dwight Morgan mm -hmm. and uh, 
and then uh, also um, Michael Steck, and then E.G. Thompson, the, uh, the magistrate, uh, our um, contractor, um, Scotty's, mm -hmm. who does the, a lot of the paving. And, and all of us just meet at the road, okay. look at it, mm -hmm. and make some assessments, and uh, come up with a solution. There you, you go. Know? And yeah. so we were able to do that. That's great. And, and, and then uh, uh, we, uh, I asked Dwight if we could send out some letters to all the people that live on that road. Mm -hmm. So they understood what we were getting ready to do. We're, we weren't going to, we were not going to repave it. It just didn't make sense to do that. Mm -hmm. But we're going to just chop it all up, get it into a really good, um, uh, more of a gravel okay. uh, road type of situation. And, um, and uh, they were able to do that. That road is in uh, much, much better shape. And I've gotten some really good feedback from good. people in that area of the mm -hmm. county. And um, have, uh, so it, but that, that wasn't, if you can pull the right group of people uh -huh. together, you know, and present them with, and a lot of times I like to go see it. I like uh -huh. to be there and let's look at it where, where we need to be. And uh, you can work out these things yeah. fairly quickly sometimes. Uh -huh. And so that, that's already done. That's great. Okay, so that's just a small example. But sure, it, but that's know, a big deal to a lot of people. So yeah. what may seem small to some is big for others. Yeah, I mean, it's so. not a huge number of people that live on that road, mm -hmm. but uh, some Amish, some non-Amish. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if you have to get an emergency vehicle back right. back there, there were some, uh, some uh, concerns about mm -hmm. getting an ambulance or a fire truck or whatever back down that road. And I can see why, because it was a mess. I bet. So, um, so but, you know, those are the things that we can do, mm -hmm. I think, with some focus and some teamwork and getting everybody working together mm -hmm. um, we'll, we'll, we'll make some, some improvements yes. and um, I'm excited about them. Mm -hmm. I'm excited for the folks that work there and I'm excited about the future of Hardin County. You're uh, not kidding. I mean we have got so bright. Uh, Blue Oval coming our way. Yes. It's this big freight train <laughs> headed our way. <laughs> yes, huge, and huge, huge it's economic huge. impact. The biggest investment, of course, in the Commonwealth of Kentucky, yeah. as well as all the others, the expansion of the hospital, um, expansion of our community college, other factories coming to our industrial park. I mean, right. our county is busting at the seams. And I know you all are working on a new comprehensive plan or updating the comprehensive plan. Yes. And I want to make a plug for that um, as a member of the Elizabethtown Planning Commission is that everyone needs to give their input to the right. comprehensive plan. So um, county citizens, city citizens, when you have that opportunity, share your input, your thoughts of how you can make the community better or ask those questions because yeah. after it's happened, then people want to know, well, how did that come to be? Yeah. Well, there was, there's a process and there's right. the time for public opinion and sharing. So please take part in that because um, uh -huh. that's a big deal. Obviously our plan for the next few years, as you said, because you want to work together, but you want it to be controlled and so things don't happen just willy nilly. Um, right. We need to be prepared. So, and he has given me that our time is running very short. It always goes by so quickly. Yeah, it does. So, I know. We, I congrats! We just you did your first you. one. <laughs> I know. I know. And you'll I, have many more of these to do in the next four years. I, well, yes, I'd love to do it and, and to try to. One of the things that we want to do is be very transparent, mm -hmm. and we've got a lot. We've got some goals and objectives there to make be, become more and more transparent for anybody that wants to see or talk, mm -hmm. you know, and try uh, has ideas or wants to see why we made a decision. We want to be very open with that. So yes. uh, I. I'd love to come back and, and talk about any topic that we want to talk about. Oh, yes. Well, we'll have you back. We usually talk with, uh, with you all during budget season, and we yeah. talk to all the different uh, department heads about all the great things that are going on. So yeah. um, we're looking forward to that. And we appreciate you being so accessible and yeah. giving your time to us. And so just real quickly before we close, when are the fiscal court meetings? And folks can put those on their calendar. Yeah, our next uh, fiscal court would be the 14th of March. It's the second Tuesday and the fourth Tuesday of okay. each month. Uh, the first one's at 3.30, and the second one in the month is at 5.30. So those would love to have more people come mm -hmm. and see what's going on. Hasn't been overly exciting mm -hmm. topics yet, but I'm, but I'm sure there will be some. Good deal. All right, and folks can always find out more on the Hardin County Government website, of course. So, well, Judge Executive Tall, you did great for your first one. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for coming and sharing all this it. good info. Um, sorry we couldn't get to absolute everything, but we had a lot of great discussions. So yeah. thank you. I'm, I'm looking forward to the next one. Thank so You're welcome. Um, thank you for tuning in today. I hope you enjoy this edition of Issues and Insights. On behalf of HCEC TV, I'm Kendra Scott. We'll see you next time when we talk with another great person doing great things in our community. Hope you have a great day, and we'll see you next time.